it's, I think, Sunday, um, day five of our uh, Heart of Arabia expedition, following the footsteps of Abdullah Filbi across the uh, deserts of Central Arabia. And uh, it was another desert explorer, Wilfred Thesiger, in his book, uh, Arabian Sands, who said that you are never alone when you are amongst the Arabs. Because if you stop into a shop, the owner will invite you for a cup of tea. You'll be joined by several other people, one of whom will invite you for lunch. And uh, over lunch, someone will invite you for dinner and to stay in his house. Such is the hospitality for which the people are renowned. And, uh, and so it has been for the last 48 hours for us, 48 extraordinary hours exploring the largest oasis in the world, the Alassa Oasis, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site now here in eastern Saudi Arabia. So it's, uh, if I look to my left, the sun is, um, the sun is rising behind the dunes, hasn't quite broken the dunes yet, lovely pink sky. It's the coldest morning of the expedition so far, down to a chilly 14 degrees, which is quite a drop from the high 30s, low to high 30s of the day. Um, we're heading south. We, we, we're leaving Philby's line, his, his, his journey line across Arabia, the, that 1917 journey. And we're heading south. We're using the support vehicles that we have to uh, engage four-wheel drive. Yesterday we filled 13 jerry cans with fuel, uh, slightly cheaper than uh, the United Kingdom fuel prices, about 50 pence a litre, thankfully, because we've got a lot of fuel on board. Because we're, we're aiming for an incredibly remote part of the empty quarter, which I will talk about in a future podcast. But... Um, around me are some beautiful white rolling sand dunes. I'm sitting on the foot of a gravel plain between some of those dunes. Now trying to shelter behind a dune from the wind. It's been quite a cold night. I woke up and had to throw another blanket over my sleeping bag. I'm just sleeping on the floor on a on a on a thin mat. Uh, that's my preference. I like it. It's very simple to roll up and get moving in the morning. But this morning was definitely a colder one, and the wind is going to. Get, get get much stronger today we're told so possibility of a bit of a sandstorm but the last two days have been nothing other than amazing really and fantastic uh, experience to really feel in the spirit of Philby when we launched with Princess Anne in London we were in the same building that he walked into umpteen times the Royal Geographical Society it was his second home um, but I didn't really feel connected to him there but here I really re really do and when we explored the green lanes of the Alassa oasis, we, we, we eventually found ourselves in the middle of, of the town and exploring the famous old souk there, the Al Khamis souk. And we had a lovely old photograph taken by Philby in 1917 of all the animals outside and a lovely ornate building. And it didn't take us long to. Uh, attract the attention of, of a lot of the local people sitting around enjoying the evening, the cool of the evening. And we retrieved Philby's black and white photograph and before long, with the help of many people, now quite a crowd had gathered, we'd identified pretty much, we thought, where Philby was when he took that photograph uh, in 1917. So that was, uh, that was a lovely moment of connection, wandering the old souk and... and uh, it's a beautiful souk, a, a, a thriving marketplace for the local people of the town of Hofuf in the Alassa oasis. And then we moved on to the to find, you know, the probably the oldest building, um, several hundred years, well, more than half a century year old, uh, Ibrahim Palace, the old fort in the in the heart of Hofuf. Uh, because it was here where Philby arrived in, in, in 1917 to meet the dignitaries, to meet the emir. And within the walls of that fort, which is in the process of being restored by the fantastic Heritage Commission here in Saudi Arabia, which does a great job of preserving Saudi Arabia's history, within the walls of that fort is the Ibn Pasha uh, Mosque, uh, an Ottoman mosque, um, with a with a beautiful dome and a, and a very ornate minaret and and 
with a little bit of exploration, we were able to find, we think, the exact spot um, where Philby stood to take that photograph. And that, that, that was a very moving moment, actually, to, especially for Reem, who, who that, you know, that was her grandfather that, uh, that, that was there. So she knelt and said a prayer at that exact spot, which is a very moving moment. And as we were walking back to our uh, uh, our vehicles, we spotted a very old school with a plaque outside it. And this happens to be the oldest school in the eastern province of Saudi Arabia, over 400 years old, an Islamic school. And as we walked past, the door opened and out stepped some gentlemen, and before long, as that's a experience, we were, we were ushered in and, and treated to the most incredible hospitality um, and, and, and an amazing potted history of, 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 of that school, which is beautiful inside. From there, we headed out to the desert. We, 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 we camped the night, uh, pretty windy old night, really, looking for the, uh, looking for the meteor showers that, that were promised, uh, but we didn't, didn't see any, probably because I was asleep pretty quickly because I was so tired. But yesterday was just quite extraordinary because um, when Philby left Hofuf striking westwards for Riyadh, he moved from sand onto gravel and 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 that was the gravel that we walked upon yesterday. And, and you know, the land is getting higher. We're, we're obviously, Riyadh is at 2,000 feet. We started our journey at, at sea level. So we're now at about six or 700 feet above sea level um, but the natural routeways would have followed the riverbeds the dry riverbeds the wadi beds why would you go up and down over um, over terrain when you could follow the gravelly flat riverbed so the riverbeds are the place where the trees grow because the water is closer to the surface uh, it doesn't rain here very often but when it does um, it rains a lot and uh, these riverbeds become very active so the water settles underground there the, the tap roots of the trees go down and you can find some some occasional acacia trees not many we saw two yesterday that's how many trees there are in this stark desert landscape but one of these trees is very significant because there's a photograph that Philby took of several men praying and obviously when you pray you face Mecca so uh, these men were facing west when they prayed and you can see by the shadows that this photograph was taken late afternoon because the shadows are pointing east so we were able to piece everything together and again we were able to stand on the exact spot where the great explorer stood to take that photograph in 1917. And again, a short prayer. Um, lunch under the shade of the tree, uh, and a little, little little snooze before we headed south to the point where we are right now. If you hear any noise behind me, I'm sheltering behind the dune to try and kill the wind, but it'll be the noise of lumbering oil trucks going down a very straight road, which runs north-south from the community we refueled in last night a place called Harad these trucks are heading south to a place called Yabrin and when you reach Yabrin that's it the blacktop stops and that's where we go off road for about 250 uh, kilometers so quite a long drive off road to try and find uh, an amazing place that the Bedouin were talking about incessantly Philby was determined to be the first European to see this place and I'll tell you all about it in the next podcast.